Hello and welcome to the Warhanam channel. My name is Ian and in this video I'm going to be experimenting with contrast paints. You might well be thinking, Ian, these paints have been out for ages. This video is about a year behind the curve and yes, you're probably right. But bear with me, I'm still just getting over the loss of chestnut ink and the Citadel glaze paints. So actually, I feel I'm being pretty progressive. I think it's fair to say that Rob the Honest Wargamer's Slap Chop video really got discussions going last year and I've got to say I absolutely loved it. It's funny, it's well presented and I know lots of people personally who've been inspired to burn through their backlogs as a result. For me personally watching that video and some of the other painters like Ninjon and Dana Howe with their follow up videos and discussions it's really turned my head to the potential of contrast. So armed with some lovely Christmas hobby vouchers and money I decided to buy in and test the contrast range for myself. I was most intrigued by the idea of using zenithal spray priming that I'd seen a few other painters do to create natural highlights and shadows that the contrast paints could then filter to make a chosen colour. But for me personally I found that although going black white grey gave an ideal neutral starting point the outcome tended to feel a little bit cold and washed out and actually that's something Ninjon points out in his Slap Shop 2.0 video. Small disclaimer here, I'm obviously not for a second disputing the effectiveness of this method whatsoever. Grisé is years old and been used to incredible effect by many painters, both on miniatures and canvas. It's a completely personal impression, practicing with contrast. So I made it my mission to explore how I could warm up the process and make the outcome feel a bit richer and less washed out. Then I remembered I'd seen a lot of talk about using pink and purple as a base colour to paint yellow over. I know Blood Tithe Ben from the Bonehead channel did this for his awesome Skaven Pyrat team and they look gorgeous. Well, for a rat anyway. And this got me thinking how I could try and blend the principles of zenithal priming with the colour theory of coloured base coats. And all without the use of an airbrush. Ok, colour wheel time. The most obvious thing for me was to try and get my head around why pink and purple are used under yellow. And looking at the colour wheel we can see that in broad terms yellow and purple sit opposite. We call them complementary colours. So for example I picked blue and orange as accent colours for my gloom spike gits because they complement each other. So if we know that yellow goes nicely over purple how would green look over red? I've picked two models to try in this video. A Space Marine Assault Intercessor who I'll be painting up yellow and if you work for the Inquisition please ignore the obvious heresy of the Ultramarine chapter symbol and a Savage Auric. I picked these because they both have an obvious main colour yellow power armour and green skin. So let's start with our marine. So here I am shooting on location in the back garden on a sunny British afternoon. Please ignore the darkness of the video and the heavy rain the conditions were far from ideal so I did have to bear grills it a little bit. No I didn't drink my own uh, paint water. It goes without saying that if you can access an airbrush you probably won't need to lean out the back door with an umbrella and you've got a bit more choice with colour. So as my attempts to film myself spraying out the window failed here's a freeze frame of the marine after the spraying process. I hit it all over with a base coat of army painter alien purple as a replacement for black. We talked about how this was opposite to yellow on the colour wheel. Then from around 45 degrees I sprayed Wraithbone which I hoped would warm up the colour as a replacement for the kind of mid grey. And finally a blast of white from the top to get the natural highlighting. I wanted to redefine the details and slightly tint the Wraithbone and white to tie it all together so I hit the entire model with a one to one diluted Drucky Violet mix. And there we go, as you can see we've got a pretty nice gradiated base to work with now. So let's filter it with contrast. Now a lot of the advertising around contrast was caking it on in one big thick coat which is great but I actually wanted a bit more control so I'll be using it a bit more like a glaze or an ink. Not overloading the brush because I also don't want the purple shadows and recesses to get completely clogged up with the yellow. So here I go with Iandan yellow carefully applying it to the armour. Now 
And there we are, the contrast is now dry and I'm pretty happy with how much warmer and richer those shadows feel compared to when I did it over black in the more standard black white grey. We've got a nice variation of light and dark. I thought I'd try and just add a single highlight to see how that looked too. So I've gone for dawn yellow. But as this is just really playing around and seeing as highlighting space marines makes a little part of me die, I stopped short of doing the whole model. So I've gone ahead and painted up the rest of the model mostly with contrast to see how the purple took the other colours and I have to say it doesn't actually look terrible. I used Blood Angels Red for the Aquila and shoulder pad trim, Black Templar for the gun casing, belt, chainsword, soft seals and shoulder pad symbols, though they were definitely a bit of a challenge with contrast, so transfers all the way in the future. I used Snakebite Leather for the pouches, Orc Flesh for the eyes and Stormhose Silver washed with Contrast Medium and Black Templar for the metals. Overall I'm actually pretty pleased with the look and I think adding a few extra stages at the priming stage elevates the look. The shadows on the main armour feel nice and organic and the purple doesn't obviously impact the other colours negatively. Now obviously if you look closely you can see where I've missed some areas of that purple undercoat so that's something I'd watch out for in the future. But I think with a bit of grime and battle damage this guy would look even better. So next up are Auric. We're back on location, fighting the weather and delivering awful camera footage, mostly of the patio because I seemingly forgot you need to hold the model vaguely in front of the lens. This time I started with Army Painter Chaotic Red. As we talked about before, green and red are opposite on the colour wheel and I want to see how this will impact the shadows. Then I went for the 45 degree Wraithbone spray again and the white from above. I wanted to reinforce that redness and bring out some of those details so I used a one to one diluted wash of Caribo Crimson all over. I chose Gut Ripper Flesh as my green for this one as I really like the slightly more pale and natural looking tone over say orc flesh, but I'll certainly have to go back and give that one a go in the future. I'm being quite sparing again and not letting too much build up in the recesses, so I maintain a bit of that red recess wash. I'm quite happy with that and I think the gradient works really nicely on the back in particular and the shadows feel fairly natural. So I'm going to try and add a highlight and see what impact that has. I mix Nurgling Green with a bit of white as the head in particular is really light. And there we go, some pretty decent looking and importantly very easy Oryx skin. So I went on to complete the model just to see how the flesh would look on a finished mini. For the skin of the pelt I used Gilliman flesh and for the scales Athematic blue. The yellow wrist guard was Iron Jaws yellow, eyes and the inside of the mouth were Blood Angels red but I diluted it for the mouth to get that more pinky tone. The weapon handle was Snakebite leather and all the string and wraps were Rattling Grime. For the bone, teeth and nails I had to improvise a little bit as I didn't have an appropriate contrast colour, so I just used Seraphim Sepia, and the stone axe head was Dawnstone mixed with contrast medium. So what are my thoughts on contrast? I actually really like it as a way to paint, and I'm not going to lie and claim these are my best set of paint jobs, and that was never the intention. But you know what, it was actually really fun and easy to produce two models that are pretty neat, colourful and visually interesting. It's definitely made me keen to experiment a bit more too. So was that complimentary zenithal base worth it? 
I think so. On both models it produced some nice warm and natural looking shadows on the main colours and I think that has to do with the fact that they're the biggest areas so you see the most impact. On the other colours of the model it certainly didn't interfere or make them look strange and that's kind of all you really need. Obviously there's limitations with rattle cans which does impact your shadow placement and the smoothness but overall I definitely think it's workable. If you've made it this far thank you so much for watching. I hope it's at least been interesting and given you something to consider going forwards even if you decide against adopting a complementary zenithal approach with contrast. Please let me know if there's any colours you'd like me to explore in the future or any models you think this approach would work well on. Please like and subscribe and all those other fun YouTubey things and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello, it's me again. Just to let you know, I've randomly selected a winner for our Loon Court competition. And the lucky winner is... Exhaustion Menace. Please get in touch with me on any of the social media accounts or email me at warhanum at gmail.com and congratulations once again.